The Muse headband has developed a new metric that will tell you what your brain age is. In this video, we'll have three specific action steps on how to record and submit your data to Muse for an analysis and report of your brain age health. This is gonna be a whole new level of evaluating how your meditation sessions, sleep, and lifestyle choices are affecting the age of your brain. Step number one is to start recording your meditation and sleep sessions with the Muse headband. I recommend doing a meditation and sleep session every day and night for 30 days so that you have enough data to look at. The more data that Muse has to work with, the more you are gonna learn about your brain. These are actually metrics that fluctuate from day to day and night to night, so you will be able to see the variability in your brain age scores depending on how you've been treating your brain. Step number two is to keep a journal. I recommend keeping daily track of your energy levels on a scale of one to 10, if you drank any alcohol, consumed any sugar, and if you got any exercise that day. These are a few of the metrics that you can include in your journal to see if they affect your daily meditation and sleep scores. Start simple so that you actually do it and don't get overwhelmed, but if you really wanna go all out, you can do what I did. I was inspired by Rob Deerdeck to start keeping a Google document where I track my wake up time, journaling, brain training sessions, meditation sessions, business work hours, diet, and exercise. And each night I update the spreadsheet and even updating the spreadsheet is a check mark on the spreadsheet. So apparently my daily habit of doing brain training through neurofeedback and meditation has paid off in my meditation brain age score, which we'll see here in a second. First, let's talk to Chris Aomoni, co-founder of Muse, on how they calculated these scores. Is this data that has been in the literature or is this information that has come out just from, you know, since you guys have democratized brain data so beautifully and have such a large uh, amount of participants in your studies, is that data that arose from just having that number of people analyzed or research or, or literature or both? Both. Yeah. So, I mean, if you get into the literature on brain age, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, that you can find and the, the research in that is accelerating. Um, and so you can find some of these things in the literature. Um, the things that we sort of like quoted there in the, in the email that came from our own work with the Muse uh, population and looking at that relationship between chronological age and uh, how the power bands change when you're sleeping. Um, so, so the model that's used for that is, is primarily uh, driven by power bands on the four channels uh, and looking at the covariance matrix um, uh, uh, related, to, related to those. In this paper here and linked below, you can see how Muse calculates these scores. For meditation, they used knowledge from the literature and EEG samples from an anonymous data set of over 5,200 individuals between the ages of 18 and 81 years of age. Their machine learning models found that the power levels of alpha low and alpha mid were the most useful in predicting a person's meditation brain age, but it did use other factors as well. The findings verified observations that Muse had made in the past that older individuals tend to have a lower peak alpha frequency and a higher alpha peak power. So currently I'm 36 years old and I must have had good low and mid alpha levels because my meditation brain age score at home was 25 years old on a good meditation day. But there are a lot of things that can affect your meditation scores. For instance, on the 9th of June, my wife and baby were out of town to visit friends and Pennsylvania. It was the baby's first flight and I was worried about them traveling. So my mind was naturally distracted that morning and my brain age was 47 years old on that session. My sessions seemed to calm down through the rest of that week, but then they jumped up again when I had to travel to LA to make the ultrasound stimulation video I put out this summer. I was staying at an unfamiliar hotel near LAX and was stressed about getting my MRI brain scan. So my meditation score was all the way up at 55 years old that day. For sleep, the machine learning algorithms found that the power of alpha high band in the N2 stage of sleep and the delta power in N3 stage of sleep most highly correlated with brain age. This is where I have a lot of work to do because my sleep brain age is often in the mid 40s, they told me. Yeah, so it's, in, it's interesting. I think, you know, when we looked at your uh, brain age uh, for sleep, it was scoring, um, you know, higher than we would expect it to. I noticed something in the graph in relation to when my wife went out of town with the baby to Pennsylvania. Very suspiciously, my sleep brain age score seemed to improve during the week that they were gone. My wife actually got mad at me because I was describing this to her last night. And basically what had happened was on the, uh, the 6th of June, she went out of town with the baby uh, to go visit friends in Pennsylvania. And my sleep immediately started getting better and my brain age got better and better. <laughs> 
<laughs> when they were gone. So I was like, look, my brain's healthy when you guys aren't here. And she didn't take that the right way. I asked Chris if my poor brain age sleep scores could have something to do with being a new parent. I mean, she's sleeping through the night a little bit better now. She's 10 months, but uh, do you think that could be part of what's going on with my sleep? Maybe. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point because um, I would expect that with an infant, you are much more attuned to sensory stimuli um, while you're sleeping, especially in light sleep. Keep in mind that these metrics are still under development, so take the information with a grain of salt and understand that improvements are constantly being added from the Muse team. Step number three is to submit your data to Muse. The Muse team will analyze your sleep and meditation data and get back to you with the results. I think you'll find it really motivating. I was really surprised with my findings and it has totally spurred me into action this summer when I decided to really clean up my health by quitting alcohol, cutting out sugar, and doing 20 hours of intermittent fasting with my regular exercise routine. I will be trying to improve my brain age this year and keep you up to speed with the results. I've lost 20 pounds so far and according to Whoop and Aura, I'm sleeping better, so I think I'm on the right track. The brain age feature is hopefully coming to the main Muse app next year, but you can be a part of the beta testing program as a special opportunity for the Tech for Psych audience. If you don't have a Muse headband yet, there is a discount link below to help support this channel. There's also a MindLift referral code in there as well if you wanted to take things to the next level and do more advanced neurofeedback training like Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins does that was recently featured on the Netflix show Quarterback. But if you just want your brain age for now, you can sign up on Muse Labs. If you sign up there, you should get a confirmation email. The Muse team assured me that they will reach out to Tech for Psych viewers as soon as they have another brain age cohort to run for the beta testing study, and the feature should be out on the main app next year. They should be able to retroactively analyze any meditation or sleep data that you record beforehand, just like they did for my data here. If you want to see how the Muse S compared to the Aura Ring and Whoop wristband sleep trackers, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.